So now, now, now it comes one of my favorites. That's responsibility dialogue culture. I think it's one of the most important topics of the, for the next years in our society. That we talk about responsibility and from the word passive behavior, you already have the ideas. This has to do with shift stuff. And this is true. Uh, this is one of the concepts I've developed further from the shift model and transported it into a world of mutual equal uh, confrontation and uh, that it can be used for all professions and not from the perspective of psychotherapy and dealing with patients, with people who do not know so much. So it's based on the TA concept of symbiotic relationships and passive behaviors. It is further developed for dealing with responsibilities in relationships and organizations. And it's, it's heading for building up a culture of responsibility. By the way, the concept is translated in English. You, you refer to it in your article, in the, in the script book, so it's in English written a lot about that already. The shift concept was individuals try to become a whole person by using someone else. And doing this, individuals avoid autonomy and integrity. <laughs> Instead, they do things like playing wooden legs when we mm -hmm. uh, choose to, to use uh, game terms or do pathological regression or exclusions of parts of personality. These are only examples what that means to avoid autonomy and integrity. I use the term integrity for saying that some somebody is not only functioning on an integrated level, but he is also functioning in accordance with his nature. In, in a what? In accordance with his or her nature, ah. how she, how it's fitting really to her or him. Because I believe for good professional work, you should be yourself in your roles. This is a, a open, this is a building up a field into that others intuitively like more to tune into when, when it's coherent with your personality. And we have in the classical notion of the shift figures like this. Do you know that? And define this dysfunctional symbiotic relationship by responsibilities not taken or responsibility is shifted or the discomfort from missing responsibility is shifted. This is one way to define symbiosis. And another aspect of it is a more a developmental aspect. And uh, dysfunctional symbiotic relationships uh, are uh, help not to activate or develop potentials. Because you never, uh, if you always somehow come along on a collegial level in a in an HR department, then the leader of the HR department never learns how to be a how to take the role of a leader. So maybe he can do that and he does not activate it because he do maybe doesn't like it much or he just do not know how to play that role and avoids to learn the organizational role of being a leader of a department 
and he loved to be in the HR part of the company because there the others also do not want to have an organizational leader because everybody likes to act like a freelancer but paid by the company. Uh, very often that's the case in HR departments. I call that um, a freelancer circus. It's not circus <laughs> under the roof of the company, but it's not a it's not a, a HR department with known strategies, ways of delivering it, clarified competencies, and so on. And you find that common in HR departments, sometimes in HR. It's it's getting better. But 20 years ago, it was very common, at, uh, and the more in Germany, we have many leaders of HR departments as parts in our groups, and uh, they now learn the difference between uh, collegial relationships between professionals and really building up an HR department. It's getting better, but there are companies where it's not the way, and especially in social organizations, they have usually many, many problems to, to understand that organizational roles are something different than being colleagues. Yeah. I think of TA organizations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So talking on, on responsibility, it's, important that in organizations responsibility has to be defined competently. It's not, not a natural thing. It's not even <laughs> cultural in a way that it's a shared culture we can relate to. We uh, <coughs> very often need instead, for example, between those three, four role takers to talk about their system of responsibility focused on the common work they will do. And this might even be different, that the common understanding how responsibilities are sh in other parts of the company, or how it's dealt with the process of dialoguing on responsibilities. So I like to think organizations as a, uh, at organizations as a system of complementary responsibilities. And as challenges change or organizations grow, sometimes uh, new responsibilities arise, but nobody's there to adopt these. It's not always the case that somebody knows about responsibility and doesn't take it. It's very often that we have actively to construct an understand, new understanding of responsibilities and find a way that somehow we take care of that. So each role and re relationship part of a whole system of responsibilities are, these are elements of a system For example, uh, defining what a team is. Maybe we come later a bit more to team work. Uh, I define the team as those who share responsibility. And habitually we say a team is those who are colleagues in a bureau, or, or a team are those who are busy with some kind of uh, task or topic. And um, if you bring them together in a workshop, you very often will find out that it's not clarifying who is now a team member according to what. This has to do with responsibilities. And from that, it has to be di defined on for a specific team topic, who is responsible, for what? What competencies does this person need to have? And certainly the hierarchies of leaders are in this sense also part of a team because they also are responsible. They are responsible 
and everybody is responsible from his organizational role. This I didn't get. See, every role is specified with what they need to do. That is, what is their competency and what is their role. And uh, the others, that is the seniors, are also to be... What, so, le so, leader, if a team uh, is uh, a group of souls who are complementary responsible for something, then each of them is maybe responsible for some roles to do something, but to lead the process is also a responsibility lead in that. So from this definition, the leader is part of the team in his function as leader and contributing his responsibilities to the focus we talk about. If the focus is changing, the team is changing. And if the focus is unclear, so the team doesn't have a, a clear purpose as a team, right. then it isn't a team. Mm. Right. We will c later come to a team controlling triangle that is uh, giving you a, a schema to, to ask for this interrelated definitions. So, life changes. Also in organizations, there will be changes through development and through active changes, organizational development. And this is why uh, the system of responsibility certainly changes with that. And this is why I need a culture of dialoguing on responsibility day by day. So whenever something is not not uh, working wonderful or is not covered, uh, <coughs> beside of how can we deal with that right now, we think about what does this mean for our understanding of being responsible if this repeats again. So, so we use we often use part of this to build up culture, not only to solve the actual problem, and we should not accept uh, an actual solution that is misleading our understanding of responsibility or if we do we should at least be aware of it not not said by the way we we just somehow react to it it's building up habits and these habits will be our culture then so implicit they build up understandings of responsibilities So, it has to be contracted on the behavior level, on the attitude level, and on the competence level. I translate responsibility with responsibility. So, when you ask for responsibility, one of the questions is the second here, are you able to respond? If you do not have the qualification to respond, you cannot take over a responsibility. Quite clear. And if you have the qualifications, the question, uh, an, an additional question is, do you want to respond? That's a question of your values. Or what you are, you are dedicated to. And you might be you might want to be respond to give a response, you might be able to give a response, but you didn't check out whether you are allowed to give a response. It's a question of authorization. Do you have the resources to respond? Sometimes, for example, uh, there is a, a question of uh, dealing with diversity putting up the quote of women <coughs> in the organization. You are able to do that, you are motivated to do that, but when when you try to bring up women into major positions, as they say, oh no, no, we have a different choice at that point, and you find out you are not allowed to respond. And the fourth dimension is, if you are not responding, will you get in trouble? You should. Or you should talk about whether it's okay not to respond. 
So any a culture in which there are no consequences for not reacting responsible uh, is not a responsibility culture. I do not mean punishment, but I mean making clear that it's part of your obligations. And this is a graphical description of the same thing. To take responsibility, this is a circle in the middle, means to give response. And then we have two individual, this means out of the perspective of a role, two individual perspectives on that, do I want to? And this might be a difference between private roles and organizational role. Privately I would not want to, but I'm not asked privately, I'm asked in a professional role, so I have to check whether I can be motivated on the background of my values in this role. And am I able to? Have, do I have the qualification? And if I'm not able to, the question is whether I can do it. To be motivated is not enough. And there are two perspectives, more organizational. Uh, am I Allow, am I allowed and equipped to do the job? So sometimes people get a lot of permission but no money. So it's, it's not possible to take over responsibility. Or they get a lot of money but not the permission. <clears throat> and also it's a question of the organizational culture. Do they have the obligation? To react, or will something happen if they do not react? Will say, will the discomfort of non-taking responsibility uh, <coughs> be directed to them? That they feel that they have more problems when they do not take responsibilities than they have when they take it. This is not the most wanted motivation, but it should be the the second layer in any organization that if you don't find a, a volunteer active way to act responsible, then you should uh, get discomfort at least to seek the opportunity to talk about how we, what can we do then, and not just skipping it. Uh, yes? I was just looking at that around the two areas. That, um, <coughs> that uh, I may have got myself into trouble, for want of a better way of putting it, on an individual level is whether I really wanted to do that yeah. piece of work, or whether I feel really that I have to. Yeah. You know, that um, in projects that I have done working with organisations, those are the two areas that um, have sometimes emerged down the track mm -hmm. where I thought, you know, I thought, I didn't really want to do this. Yeah. I've somehow let myself do it. Yeah. Um, and the same with um, that I felt obliged. Yes. When you're talking as it, being really open and transparent with myself. And, is, uh, and if you don't want to, you have to check out whether this is a social diagnosis because something is wrong. Yeah. Or because your values are not going with what you should, yeah. or motivation shouldn't do. Yeah. Some, sometimes yeah. people think too much it's a question of their motivation and do not dare to take this as an indication of a professional judgment. And if, if, if it's said, you should bring it into the discussion. Mm. I, somehow I do not want to do that. I don't, mm. not because I in general do not want to do that project, but, and I'm in general somebody who is not too critical. But at this point I do not want to. Can you help me find out whether this might be a, a quite valid professional judgment, but I do not yet understand what it means. Mm -hmm. Another um, thing that I was thinking may influence, I was thinking some of the work you've shared, Rona, around you know, people are feeling under pressure in terms of financially or scare of loss around doing things. You know, 
out of obligation or the have to because of those yeah. survival things that, yeah. that can often cause tension and right um, and say so, so then got in a understandable way corrupt but it doesn't make sense no. when they adapt to a system that will not lead to a, a reasonable come out mm. so they have they have to learn to overtly deal with the obligation mm. and here comes in the question of the, the the understanding of the organization and your professional standards mm. and it's important to have a positive <coughs> critical dialogue between those two and you might have to accept that uh, you have not the authority to define what is the, the obligations are. You only have the freedom to take that job or not. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to pay the price for your freedom. And that's okay. There's something about the... Um, in Western culture, I don't know if this is everywhere, but in Western culture I've noticed people absolutely do not understand when they sign a contract for a job in an organization that they're signing a contract for a role which has duties made out clearly in the job description and that all of those duties might be duties that they're qualified to do. Mm -hmm. There is this huge individual idea that you do what you like what? doing mm -hmm. as opposed to what there is to be done. Mm -hmm. And I find a lot of coaching with people in sort of middle level yeah. well, that this is a real common thing to have to work through with them and um, there seems to be coupled with that a huge media cultural piece that jobs are entirely satisfying work is something where you are satisfied every minute of the day and if you're not then you're in the wrong job I think this comes from these short, episodic TV interview type things. Yeah. But I'm happy with my work. <laughs> and it's like, who the hell is happy with every single every minute, minute of the day, yeah. including people who've gone freelance and work independently? And right, right. Yeah. yeah. It's certainly a, a, a style you could follow, but you have to go by feet. <laughs> it's a star, this idea you can follow, but you have to walk by feet. <laughs> and that, that, sec that side, the organizational sphere, in my experience in the last 25 years of consultancy, it's rare that individuals in an organization recognize that they are in an organization. Mm. Yeah. So those things about, as you said, mortgage and not having enough money, all the sort of pressures I have to be there, it comes totally out of the individual side, not out of recognition. Yeah, there's not much of a real dialogue on that, and this doesn't help the organization as well. Yeah. And it's a, a mutual symbiotic relationship. I do not challenge you on being clear about the goals, and you give me the freedom to do what I want. Yeah. 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 But it's at the cost of a good functioning of an organization. Another difference that makes a difference for me is um, responsibility for and responsibility related to. This is taking in account uh, that besides your the, the responsibility responsibilities that is directly coming with your role and where, where you will be punished or confronted with when you when you don't do that you always should leave a, a, a lot of a, a, a attention and energy for the question is everything going together in our company so you have a responsibility uh, if you see that responsibility for the whole is not taken uh, to deal with it. And on the Titanic, if the waiter who is responsible for serving good dishes sees the iceberg, he certainly is responsible related to navigation. Also, he's not 
responsible for navig navigation. <laughs> And people show behavior that is avoiding responsibility or avoiding discussion of responsibility. And you know the four types from the shifts. And it's all, all important that we don't call that a passive behavior because it's, it, one is, it's not passive. Sometimes it's very active, but it's doing something different. And the, the other thing, uh, it, it's, not, it's not the level of activity, it's the relatedness to, res, to responsibility that makes this behavior a problem. So I call it uh, responsibility avoiding behavior. And this certainly implies an understanding of that we know what responsibility is that is avoided. Or at least the idea, if we don't know, that we have to talk about. So if you're doing nothing, where well, you should do something, it's inviting others into doing instead. And <coughs> the second perspective I do not call over-adaptation, but misadaptation. You respond to illusionary requests instead of what is contracted. What is illusionary or not is certainly based on discu discussing uh, what the strategy is, like Rosemary stated in, for the HR. For example, if your strategy is to work very little with clients, but using the working with clients to develop projects <laughs> that can be handed over to clients, that they can works himself. From this uh, point of view, working through everything with your client, your client make love that and pay for you, paid, but from uh, in responsibility of to the strategy of the department, this is a misadaptation. And it's inviting us into accepting wrong responses or into correcting and clarifying instead of self saying, oh, I'm not sure whether I should do 20 hours with this client. For example, orientation in market. We have decided here, we, we train the client one day with some instrument, how he can clarify his orientation to market himself. But this client system doesn't want to be trained. They want that I do it for them and they pay very much, and they stroke me a lot, and so I do it. And it's still wrong, because it's not serving the strategy. And it's only wrong in, uh, compared with the organizational strategy. It's not wrong because of one of the professional uh, doing reasons. You could do that, but in the professional role, nothing is wrong. In, the, in your organizational role, it's wrong. Agitation is overdone or not adequately directed activity and engagement, inviting others into exhausting co-agitation, avoiding or in, in, uh, inviting into avoiding or into taking over staying essential. Now, inviting others in co-agitation, avoiding or taking over, Ah, others should take over to stay essential. Now it's, <laughs> I've read what I've written here. So agitation is a lot of the opposite of staying essential. And if you know what the essentials of your task are, then most of the time you know when it's enough and when you do the right thing and you do not have to be so agitated. And many, many much, much agitation in organization is coming from not being clear what is essential. And also in boards, very high level boards, they always say they have no time. It's just not true. They do not really know what they are talking about. 
who in which responsibility, what to achieve through communication once they are finished. And what is essential and what is not. So, my, it's not true certainly for all boards, but my experience is as many boards really do have time when they learn to be essential. An emergency, causing emergency concerning oneself, incapacitation, how it is called uh, in the shift material, or emergency concerning responsibility. It has to be done something suddenly and it's forcing others to take over because of higher values that cannot be injured. So we are developing uh, with uh, Frida, who was here, um, uh, internet-based training on skills, uh, inviting responsibility, and confronting avoidance of responsibility. Because we made, we have the experience that many of our trainees do not dare to confront. Uh, and talk about responsibilities in time, and if they do, they do it not competently. They choose the wrong tone, the wrong role, they go into one-up, my boss is, does not have any idea about what coaching is, this is why he cannot tell me how we should offer our coaching services, and so on. So, very often, the invitations are not competent. And gives the other reason, the other person reason enough not to react to the confrontation, but <coughs> react to the wrong trial to invite into confront, uh, responsibility dialogue. And, uh, I made a, I de defined dimensions of it and made a case study and went to learning stations within that case studies with option how you can, what you can do then, and now, and the first step is judge yourself, is it a good option or not? First, first decision, and second, if it's a good option, why? And if it's not a good option, why not? And then they can click on have my a description of the same thing, and dialogue with that, and we try it in different Settings, one is people just doing it for their, their own, or embedded in a training program. So in the second seminar, they start with that, in between they train, and there are many questions open, and in the third seminar, they have a chance to talk about. And the basic pattern is identify and account for discomfort, so it's important to be aware of discomfort, locate discomfort with what is it connected as far as I know, can I relate the discomfort with responsibility not taken or mistaken? What does it mean, locate discomfort? Fun? The locate discomfort. Yes. Lo locate means in what situation does it happen? In what? In what situation, situation does it happen? Who does feel discomfortable? Uh, you also can use it internally. How do I, how do I notice that I feel discomfortable? Psychotherapy, locate discomfort, you'll start looking in. Yeah, the body and yes, this is an internal uh, okay. perspective. Why not? But looking from outside, uh, discomfort is somewhere. The, the discomfort is with the people who should sell this kind of insurance, but people who decide what, what's the logic of this, insurance is cheating people. Mm -hmm. This is not their business. They don't, and they have to find out, oh, I feel discomfortable when an old customer is looking into my eyes and say, should I really buy that? And I feel forced to say yes. That's a, that's just locating the discomfort. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and so, Relate it as far as you can to responsibility or invite others to do it together with you. 
reflect reasons for not taking responsibility. If you have think, oh, there's a person in his or her role is not taking responsibility. Can I understand from this frame of reference why it's not done? It's not all not always go to a uh, motivation theory. It's not because she doesn't want. Because sometimes it may just is. Uh, her understanding of the responsibility of her role is just different. And if if you ask around, nobody has the idea that this missing responsibility is included in their role definition. So it's it's a way from confronting uh, in a drama way. It's just more. So let's see. It's somehow it must be covered. Where are we, and what can we do? So, if it's you regress responsibility with those who you think who are responsible, and they might be have very different idea about that, so you regress dialogue, staying and the early you do it, the more you can be relaxed and neutral and not. Like, can we talk about responsibility? <laughs> <laughs> and if it's, if you, it's no chance to shift discomfort or responsibility back to those who should take it, then it's important that you think about self-caring strategies. That you, also, you do not get rid of it, you do not have to bear it any longer and can make that very clear, not expecting that somebody uh, takes this as a reason to take over responsibility. And <coughs> if there are bigger entities, you can together think about how can we organize a reshifting of uh, discomfort uh, to those who have responsibility. For example, as the rest of our chickens, what we do not eat as chicken breast and legs, is going to Africa and destroying the, the uh, market sale because it's so ch so cheap given away there that nobody there can farm hens uh, and get a reasonable price and they have a lot of discomfort. So we invite uh, symbiosis, but we. I, I do have some discomfort with it because when I want something else in, uh, beside breasts and legs, I do not find it. <laughs> For my cat, I do not find it in the shop because they do everything to, to Africa. But they also have discomfort. If they feel um, dependent on the supply and are not able to develop our own business and the bride they need. And... Um, here you will not find anybody who has a discomfort. It's not a symbiotic, symbiotic question between the people you have in the room. And most, <coughs> when you look globally, we are uh, used to work with symbiotic relationships between people present, but most symbiotic relationships on our globe are between people who never meet. So we need content and understanding of symbiotic relationships beyond that, and we need to have skills to bring these relationships into the room, and you will not see it from the psychological quality of, of the people sitting here. 